Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I will be with you today in uh, this webinar. Uh, before starting, to introduce myself, um, I am a business Deve development manager at Altanova Double Engineering. My my background is mainly on failure analysis, reliability engineering, in addition to online monitoring technologies. Uh, I am a member in SIGRE Working Group B3 on risk and health index of assets and D2 on artificial intelligence and technologies in uh, electric uh, utilities. So this webinar, in fact, it's going to discuss the importance of having online monitoring systems in critical transformers uh, in our uh, fleet, and also the importance of having um, a sort of plan of actions or what we should do when we receive alarms from our um, online monitoring systems. Uh, before starting with, the, with the, uh, the topic of this webinar, just to uh, give you a quick introduction on Double, uh, my company. So Double has been uh, in the industry, uh, in the market since 1920. And over all these years, there have been uh, many innovations, many acquisitions. The most recent one are um, Morgan Schiffer uh, that Double acquired in 2017, who are very well known in the DGA or dissolved gas analysis uh, domain. And also um, uh, in the last two years uh, or in 2021, uh, there is also Altanova and Phoenix that double acquired. Altanova is an Italian company who are very well known for their offline testing instruments and online monitoring systems. And Phoenix, uh, who are specialized in the high voltage equipment for the test uh, labs. So this is double for Altanova. Altanova, it's a um, it's a group of uh, three companies. The first company uh, uh, was ESA, uh, or ESA, that was established in 1938 in Taino in Italy. And the second company is Tecamp, that was established in 1999. And then in 2017, uh, ESA and Tecamp, they merged together to form Altanova uh, Group. And later in 2019, Intelliso joined this group and Intelliso are very specialized in temperature and BG sensors for medium voltage uh, switch gear. And then in 2021, this was the year uh, when uh, Altanova was acquired by uh, Double Engineering Company. With all of these acquisitions, Double has now a large portfolio that is divided into three main uh, segments. The electrical test equipment for offline testing of transformers, rotating machines, protection relays, etc., And uh, the monitoring systems to monitor the condition of the assets. And uh, Double is very well known in uh, this domain, in particular for the transformers, rotating machines. And professional services uh, for training, performing diagnostic tests and consultations. And uh, we have already our own oil laboratories and the expertise to provide the utilities with the uh, solid results and recommendations. So this was just a, a quick uh, introduction about the company. Uh, returning back to the topic of today, uh, transformers uh, are one of the most important assets in our network. And in general, there are many tools to assess the condition of the transformer. Um, and these tools can be categorized, divided into three groups. Inline tools that are done when the transformer is in service. We have, uh, for example, the DGE sampling that we are doing. This is one of the inline tools. And the BG surveys. And we have the offline uh, tools, and these are mainly the electrical tests that 
are done when the transformer is um, de-energized out of service. And online tools where sensors are installed on a permanent basis to monitor the condition of uh, our assets. Our focus uh, today is uh, going to be the online tools that we can consider when it comes to the uh, monitoring of uh, power uh, transformers. And in fact, there are many techniques that can be used in this respect. Uh, and this includes in, uh, uh, the condition, monitoring the condition of the pushing by measuring the leakage current uh, to uh, calculate from it the online bar factor and capacitance. And we have also one of the possibility of solutions to uh, consider when it comes to the transformer is to monitor the partial discharge activities by installing BT sensors and dissolve gas analysis in the oil for the main tank, sometimes also for the tap changer. Um, another thing to consider when it comes to the transformer to monitor the operation parameters like tap changer, load voltage, uh, temperature, uh, condition of the cooling fans, and all of these parameters help us to uh, uh, have more visibility when it comes to the load profile and also in doing the diagnostic analysis. So if we will speak first about the pushing monitoring. Pushing monitoring, one of the uh, uh, most important uh, points uh, for the uh, health or the condition of the transformers. It's a bit challenging because when we have the transformer offline out of service, we just apply, when we test the pushing, uh, the offline power factor and capacitance, we just apply a voltage on the mean conductor we measure the leakage current from the test uh, tab. We have a known voltage that we are applying and also a known current that we are measuring. And from there, we are able to measure the capacitance and power factor. Everything is very straightforward when it comes to offline testing, simple and easy. When it comes to the online monitoring, it's a different story. So first of all, we need to have sensors and these sensors are attached to the pushings. We need to have an, a monitoring module for the acquisition of the data. And mostly important, the user interface to analyze these measurements and to configure the alarms. So what, what happens when it comes to the online monitoring for the pushings? we are always considering a sensor. Uh, usually it is called a pushing tab adapter. And these pushing tab adapters or these sensors, they are connected to each phase, so the pushing of each phase. And from there, uh, or in this case, we can measure the currents of these phases together. And from these currents, we do some calculations to measure the capacitance and power factor. These calculations are not providing the exact power factor and capacitance values as the ones that we are obtaining from the offline testing because we don't measure the system voltage. We are measuring here the uh, current. But we are looking always for the trending uh, and detecting any kind of abnormality in the measurements. Uh, in this case, we rely only on the current and we call this approach a relative power factor uh, approach. And Double has been using this approach for many years and it saved uh, many uh, transformers. The other option or the other possibility is to measure as well the voltage of the system. And we can do that by considering the voltage transformers or the VTs uh, and the transformer circuit to calculate uh, more accurately the uh, power factor and capacitance compared to the ones that we are measuring in the offline uh, testing. And this approach, we are calling it in double uh, a true power factor. Uh, the monitoring system that double is offering is a QST one 
uh, it can use the two approaches, the relative and the true power factor simultaneously at the same uh, time. And uh, there is a big benefit from that. We will see it uh, during the case uh, studies. So this is for the uh, pushing monitoring. If we will go forward to the BD uh, or monitoring the BD activities in the uh, transformers, in general, we have different ways that we use to extract information about the presence of the partial discharge and the type of this partial discharge. So we have uh, uh, the time resolved, and uh, from there we are able to see the BD pulses that are happening with respect to the time. We are speaking here about the time domain. And we have also another way or another domain where we can identify the BD. This very famous domain is called the phase resolved BD that shows the BD pulses with respect to the uh, phase angle of the applied voltage. And the uh, other quite famous uh, domain is the frequency domain. And this includes the uh, radio frequency interferences caused by the partial discharge at the different uh, frequencies. So we have different domains to identify the presence of DD. And uh, for that reason, Dobel developed several indices to make it easy to track the development of the severity or uh, the severity of the partial discharge that are happening in the transformers, uh, and uh, uh, to be able to observe the trend with respect to the uh, time. And also another thing which is important is to be able to generate alarms based on these trends. Once an alarm will be generated, the user then can look at the different domains uh, and be able to analyze what is happening inside the uh, transformer. And here are some of the examples of the BD sensors or the partial discharge sensors that can be installed on a transformer. So the first one here, this is uh, a UHF drain valve prop. Um, it's, it is used to monitor the partial discharge inside the transformer tank. It's simply a, uh, an antenna, a UHF antenna, and it is uh, inserted through the oil valve inside the tank of the transformer. And in fact, it's one of the uh, powerful sensors when it comes to the sensitivity, especially in the application of the BD uh, measurements at the transformer. The second uh, picture here is for an HFCT or uh, high frequency current transformer. Uh, that we can place it on the neutral of the transformer to detect the BD currents that goes from the transformer to the ground. Um, another sensor that can be considered is um, LGWS sensor. Uh, it's a UHF sensor. We are placing it at the cable termination at the transformer side. And it's helpful also to detect um, uh, the BD activities at the termination of the cable, especially when your uh, cable termination doesn't have um, a shield or a ground to have an HFCT. Uh, another possibility is to have a UHF uh, plate or hatch sensor that is installed on the tank of the transformer. Uh, so it's simply a UHF sensor and we are placing it through a dielectric window. This dielectric window, it has to be manufactured um, in the uh, factory. And from there also, it's very sensitive one, similar to the uh, UHF drain valve probe when it comes to detecting the PD activities inside the uh, transformer. So uh, to describe any monitoring systems, uh, you have an asset, uh, you have uh, sensors and acquisition units. Uh, there are also the communication tools to access uh, the data. 
and mostly important, the analysis tools in the user interface and what actions to do for every level of alarm. Uh, before we purchase an online monitoring system, we need to identify the asset itself, write down the specifications, identify the approach or the method or the technique of the monitoring, and what we expect from the user interface, what tools are available there to help us in the diagnosis and also set up uh, a true alarms or to have uh, more true alarms than the false ones. And most important, what is the after sale support for the manufacturer of the online monitoring system. And after we purchase the online monitoring system, we start working on the installation, commissioning, maintenance, training, hosting also of the uh, acquisition unit and the data archiving. Uh, so one of the things to highlight in this slide that it's uh, uh, that the monitoring system itself is not just a box or a module with some lights on it. Uh, there are a lot of things to consider once we decide to monitor our uh, assets. Um, another point to emphasize or highlight when it comes to uh, an online monitoring system, especially for the dissolved gases in the oil. And this point is the accuracy. Uh, to illustrate the importance of the accuracy uh, using uh, this Duval triangle, the widely used tool when it comes to the analysis of the uh, dissolved gas in the oil, if we have here two DGE monitors and uh, one is red, blue, they have different accuracy. The one uh, or the red DGE monitor, it has somehow a good accuracy compared to the blue one. So if we look here to this small region in the uh, Duval triangle, with the red DGE monitor, you are 100% sure that the fault in your transformer is a thermal uh, fault from 300 to 700 degree, some critical fault to address or consider. But with the blue DGE monitor that has uh, low accuracy, very large uncertainty, you are not sure anymore if you have this thermal uh, fault in this region or it's simply, uh, or the true value is simply in uh, in this region here, which is uh, uh, a normal discharge. Again, because you have uh, a low accuracy or a large uncertainty where the true value can be uh, located. Another point also regarding the condition uh, monitoring, uh, and I brought this slide because several electric utilities uh, consider that accuracy is not that important when it comes to online measurements. And the most important thing is the trending of the gases. So what we see here is, uh, is an increasing trend of methane gas that is measured using uh, a photoacoustic uh, method. And this trend can be a source of uh, a concern for any asset uh, manager. But if we look to the next measurements, we will find out that this trend, or what we thought is, it was a trend, it, it's actually a fluctuation in the large fluctuation in the uh, measurement. And the reason behind that is the accuracy of this DGA monitor, which is 10% for the methane gas. And uh, in fact, this 10% is the uh, accuracy of the sensor itself. So you don't, uh, you didn't include uh, or or this system doesn't include the, gas, the accuracy of the gas extraction and the gas delivery system. So you can imagine how low the accuracy is for the whole uh, system and the impact of that on the online measurements and our interpretation, our analysis of the data. So uh, because of that, uh, accuracy is one of the most important things for Morgan Schaefer and Doppel. 
And this is something that we always ensure in all of our DGA monitors, including the latest uh, innovation, the latest DGA monitor, Calisto R9, which is in fact uh, an infrared photoacoustic spectroscopy monitor, but in the same time, it can auto calibrate itself uh, to ensure accurate, accurate measurement along uh, the life uh, cycle. So uh, going forward with case studies, and in these case studies, uh, uh, we will see together the importance of uh, having uh, a sort of a plan of action uh, for every uh, alarm that is uh, generated and how the, uh, uh, the online monitoring system can uh, prevent a lot of catastrophic accidents that can happen if the alarms can be addressed in the right time. So uh, the first case study here is uh, on a power factor of pushings, an auto transformer, it was manufactured in 1986, and uh, double online monitoring system uh, Prime uh, detected an increasing trend for the power factor. Uh, the daily, weekly, and monthly power factors, they were increasing, and also for the capacitance, everything was increasing for this, uh, uh, for this pushing. So the decision was to take the transformer out of service and do offline testing. Uh, and when the offline testing was done, the power factor, the offline power factor, it was 1.36%, which is quite high compared to the last offline test result and the nameplate uh, value. When they took an oil sample, or when this electric utility uh, took an oil sample from the pushing, they found uh, a very high value of uh, hydrogen and a very small uh, uh, value of acetylene. And this uh, is one of the characteristics of the partial discharge in the pushing. So they decided, of course, to replace uh, this pushing uh, and they did a forensic examination for this faulty pushing. And they, you can see from the pictures here that the forensic analysis shows a burning in the foil and symptoms of uh, BD. Another uh, case study, and this one is actually an interesting one. Um, so um, we noticed uh, from uh, a double uh, monitoring system uh, a sudden increase in the monthly uh, true power factor of one of the pushing. Uh, you can see this is a, a monthly trending. Usually this monthly trending, it shouldn't be like that. It should be somehow something flat, like the other two phases. This was something unusual. So in this kind of situation, because we are using the true power factor, we are measuring the current and the voltage, the, the leakage current from the pushing and the voltage from the uh, voltage transformer. So we have two possibilities. It's either the pushing that has a problem or it can be the voltage transformer that has an issue or uh, a problem. The good thing is that uh, the online monitoring system that was used with this pushing, it was Calisto T1. So it was measuring the relative power factor that is mainly based on the leakage current only and doesn't depend on the system voltage in addition to the true power factor. And when we look here to the relative uh, power factor, we can see that it is also increasing as well. So these give us indications that the voltage transformer is, is okay, it's fine, but now the concern is limited to the uh, pushing itself. And we started at this point to give attention to the online reading of uh, these pushings. However, we noticed that this increasing trend of the true and the relative power factor, they started, both of them, they started to decrease. And this, in fact, doesn't make uh, any sense because usually power factor of the pushings are not improved by uh, themselves. So uh, we started to look at the basics of the power uh, factor uh, measurements. From the basics, when you apply a voltage on an insulation, you are measuring the current. And from the applied voltage and the measured current, uh, you are calculating the uh, 
the angle between them, take cosine the angle, which is the power uh, factor. Um, but when there is a resistive leakage pass to the ground, not all the current will go to the measurement unit. Some of them will go away from it. And if we are going to use some vector calculations, the phase angle is no longer less than 90. The phase angle between the applied voltage and the measured current is going to be more than 90. So cosine anything more than 90 is negative. The power factor will have a negative sign. And this explains somehow why the true and the relative power factor uh, were decreasing. Uh, there is an interesting paper on this uh, topic on the negative power factor um, uh, by Dobbel that explained this phenomena in uh, details. Uh, so we shared all of these uh, informations. We, uh, we shared uh, our conclusion with this electric utility. And uh, this electric utility decided to investigate. Um, and they found out from the investigation that the gasket um, at the oil window is totally uh, broken and moisture found its way to the bushing and that made this resistive uh, path for the leakage current and give an explanation to what we have been seeing. A different story happened at another electric utility uh, where the bushing of a transformer uh, was also monitored using double uh, system. So there was uh, a continuous increasing trend of the leakage current of H1 pushing, and this results in an info alarm for the online capacitance. After nine hours, there was a warning uh, alarm, and then after four hours, the third level of alarm, the highest level of alarm, the action, uh, alarm was generated and there was no action that was done by this electric utility. And this resulted up uh, with the failure of uh, the pushing after eight hours uh, from the action alarm. And the, of course, the sudden trip and outage from the uh, transformer itself. So uh, this electric utility, after this failure, they started to investigate how and why this happened. They looked first at the offline measurements of the power factor and capacitance, but as you can see, all the measurements compared to the previous measurements and the nameplate value, they were uh, normal within the expectation. So uh, they decided to do forensic analysis. And this was the moment when they found out that uh, uh, three layers, three capacitive layer of the pushings were burned were totally cooked, as you can see from the pictures here, and there were uh, clear symptoms of BD uh, treeing. Uh, so the idea from this case study, in fact, is to show how a failure mode can be developed in a very short uh, time. In our case here, the failure happened in, uh, in less than 24 hours. And in fact, this failure, would be totally avoided if this electric utility would interact in time with the generated levels of uh, alarms. So the fourth case study uh, is from an electric utility in USA. Uh, and I brought it here because this uh, case study was uh, actually presented uh, at uh, uh, the uh, double annual event, life of transformer. So uh, uh, this electric utility uh, is uh, have is having uh, or this electric utility has uh, Calisto two uh, that uh, monitors hydrogen and carbon monoxide. And in less than one day, it uh, Calisto two generated all the level of alarms, the minor level of alarm, the major one, and also the trending for hydrogen gas uh, were all uh, generated. Uh, the user interface of Calisto 2 uh, shows a sudden increase of hydrogen of 400 ppm in less than 24 uh, hours. 
And this utility um, follows the IEEE C57 standard, where the alarm level of hydrogen was at 95 uh, ppm. So accordingly, they decided to take an oil sample for the uh, laboratory. Uh, but unfortunately, in the afternoon before the results arrived, the transformer was uh, tripped, it went out of, from the service. And this trip uh, was associated with a major damage with the uh, mean uh, tank. So after this accident, uh, this electric utility, uh, they developed a new uh, DGA uh, response uh, policy where the transformer should be de-energized immediately if the online measurements of hydrogen, uh, either hydrogen, acetylene, or uh, ethylene will exceed the online thresholds. Additionally, uh, they revise the uh, alarm thresholds and the actions to be done at each level of the alarms. And the idea from this case study, in fact, is uh, uh, to emphasize, to highlight the important or the importance to have a predefined uh, plan of action for every uh, alarm. Another case study from another utility in UK, and this was a, a complete different situation than what happened with the previous uh, case uh, study. Um, and this utility, um, they have already uh, a very clear uh, plan of action for, uh, uh, for all the alarms that are generated from their online monitoring uh, system. Uh, so for this case study, it was from a transformer, it's quite, it's quite old one, and there was a sudden increase in the DGA monitor. It was a composite dissolved, uh, uh, a composite gases, uh, or a DGA monitor to measure the composite gases. And you can see here that there was um, uh, somehow a sudden increase in the DGA, but it's not that significant, but it generated the info or the first level of alarms. Uh, uh, and Accordingly, they decided to do uh, some action. So they took an oil sample uh, to try to assess uh, or evaluate if this alarm was because uh, of the loading. Uh, they put uh, restrictions in place uh, for no entry, no one to approach uh, the transformer. And meanwhile, the shift manager was instructed to de-energize the transformer if another alarm is received or uh, generated. And finally, based on the results from the laboratory, they uh, decided to take the transformer out from the service in order to investigate. There was uh, uh, unexpected results in the oil, results from the oil lab. So, uh, they performed the offline testing. In fact, it was the, uh, the team of Dobel in the UK who did these tests. Um, so the first test that was done was uh, uh, the power factor and the capacitance. And from the uh, C high and C high low and C low, all the measurements for, for the power factor and capacitance uh, for um, the, the current measurements when you are comparing it with the previous measurements, the, Everything was uh, according to the expectations. Nothing was abnormal. The same also with the SFRE. Uh, the traces of the SFRE were comparable to the previous uh, results. The only concern was the DC winding uh, resistance, especially in the middle phase. You can see that it's, uh, the value is double uh, to the value of the other phase. And also when you look at the previous measurements, um, the value was quite, quite large compared to the previous ones. So uh, the decision was to do visual inspection, uh, open uh, the uh, transformer and double found out uh, that inside the uh, transformer tank, the 
middle phase uh, to the pushing was falling apart, there was significant signs of arcing. So repairs were done, transformer was saved uh, because of an alarm that was generated from an online monitoring system and it's just it was just a um, first level of alarms but there was again uh, a plan of actions from these electric utilities towards this uh, alarm so as a conclusion uh, condition monitoring of uh, power uh, transformers um, uh, can avoid catastrophic failures. It's very important to choose the right monitor and sensors, and also to have uh, a predetermined uh, plan of actions, and to review the information that are coming from the uh, online monitoring systems on a regular basis, and to be able to take uh, justified actions in the right uh, time. Last point, Dobel has a complete solution for the uh, transformer condition monitoring. And the most important thing, uh, the expertise to support the asset managers and the electric utilities to take the decision, uh, to avoid the outages, to minimize the downtime and maximize the uh, up uh, time. And uh, that's it. That is the end of the uh, uh, presentation. Let's see if we have uh, questions. Yeah, we have a number of questions here. So the first question is, uh, let's go back. So, uh, question number one, just to clarify when it is advisable to install the online double kits in a transformer. Will it be a new uh, unit or even you can install it on a used transformer approaching the end of life and why? So, it's uh, everything, it's, uh, it's always based on the criticality of this asset. It's always based on the budgets, allocated budgets that you are having uh, when it comes to um, the maintenance policy that you are considering. Uh, if you are looking to implement the online uh, or condition-based uh, condition uh, maintenance or uh, predictive maintenance, then uh, yes, uh, the, it would be always preferable to consider uh, online monitoring systems on uh, your transformers, even if they are new. And that is an approach that many utilities are considering worldwide. Uh, when it comes to the transformers that are having issue history or problem, uh, and you want to keep them for a number of years in the, in the network, then yes, it, it would be always recommended to have an online monitoring system to avoid uh, unexpected uh, outages during this period where you are considering this transformer uh, in service. Uh, the second uh, question, does double team conduct offline transformer electrical tests under fault investigation only or it depends on the client requirements? Uh, both. So uh, uh, double has uh, a large team in uh, uh, in Europe, Asia, Africa, I think we are covering uh, uh, the five continents and uh, we are uh, able to uh, do the offline testing for the transformers uh, during the uh, fault, for the fault investigation and we, are, we can also provide opinion uh, and as needed from the uh, clients.
Uh, another uh, question when installing the online condition monitoring on a transformer, do you also include the dielectric strength, moisture, and uh, forensic analysis? Or this is done uh, separately from the DGE online uh, equipment? Uh, so the dielectric strength, moisture, yes, it can be monitored online, of course. Uh, dielectric strength and foren for forensic analysis, we will need to take an oil sample and uh, uh, send it to the uh, laboratory. Uh, and it can be done through the laboratories that uh, uh, Double have. Um, uh, we don't have uh, uh, an online uh, monitoring equipment to monitor online the forensic analysis or the uh, breakdown voltage or dielectric strength. Uh, so one of the other questions uh, before joining Dobel, Altanova was going to uh, launch a pushing monitoring system based on voltage reference. Um, Calist one is already based on this technique. Can we expect a launch from Altanova uh, or it has been blocked? Uh, so Altanova has also um, uh, a system. It's called uh, Travonova um, and it can also measure uh, the power factor based on the voltage reference. It's available uh, and uh, uh, it can be considered as well. Uh, one more question, how do you calibrate the parameter for each gas on Calist R9 in order to benchmark the upcoming gases that uh, built up in the oil and the level of severity indication. Uh, so one of the things that we are doing in Calisto R9 and we have uh, an innovation on that, uh, we are using the uh, water uh, vapor, we are, or we are measuring the moisture of the water vapor, we are using, uh, um, um, we are having a calibration module, and this calibration module consists of a small milliliter of uh, volume of water, which is totally sufficient during the uh, lifetime of Calisto R9. And from this water, we are mo measuring the moisture content, and we are using it as a reference to indicate if there is any kind of uh, uh, disc discrepancy in the measurements in R9. And based on that, we can. Uh, auto calibrate or recalibrate all the measurements. In the end, uh, the idea is that Calisto R9 uh, should have a guaranteed values uh, uh, or should provide the user with guaranteed values of measurements according to the accuracy that uh, is uh, stated or mentioned. Yes, the papers are going to uh, uh, so one of the question about uh, the presentation, the presentation will be provided, and it's also provided. You can download it here from uh, uh, this webinar. Uh, one of the questions also: How to determine the alarms? Does it from uh, does it come from the IEEE? Uh, it depends on what parameter you are measuring. Uh, so um, uh, it's also depending on the uh, policy and this electric utility. It depends on the experience, uh, historic measurements. There are many factors, and uh, uh, in Double we uh, we can also work with the end user, with the utilities to find out the best alarm thresholds. Uh, it's a very good question because the alarm uh, thresholds we shouldn't make them too low. In this case, you are going to generate uh, a lot of false alarms, and you don't want to, be, to put the alarms level at very high uh, values because this means that you're going to miss uh, an important event. So uh, setting up the alarms uh, is something that we are always working with uh, uh, end users, with the utilities, to find out the best alarms that uh, will meet their expectations. Uh, Another question, how uh, how the oil will affect the BD in the transformers? Uh, so when, when, a, when a partial discharge happens inside the transformer, uh, if you have a DGE monitor, uh, you will be able to detect uh, the BD measurements. Uh, you'll be able to detect uh, the BD from the uh, 
DGA signature. Uh, if the oil, the quality of the oil is not good enough or sufficient enough, it can help to uh, create a source of uh, a partial breakdown in the insulation inside the transformer and the uh, BD will happen. So the condition of the oil can assist in the formation of the BD. If you have a DGA monitor, it can help also you along with the BD sensors to detect the uh, presence of the partial discharge. Uh, for a two gas monitor, what should be the alarm settings for hydrogen and carbon monoxide? Uh, so there are uh, standard uh, thresholds that Morgan Schaefer, based on the experience, is considering uh, for hydrogen and carbon monoxide in, in their Calisto 2. And these uh, thresholds can be revised and discussed as well with Morgan Schaefer if required. Again, based on the history of this uh, transformer, based on the operation loading profile, uh, there are many uh, points to consider. Um, another question is, uh, what are the root cause analysis? of the high DC resistance of the middle phase of the last case study. Um, and uh, the reason behind the uh, sign of the arcing. Uh, so uh, this, this is an old transformer, very old transformer. I think it was my fashion 1984. It has been in the service. It's a power uh, station, uh, always loaded. Uh, and this could help that um, it can cause a sort of a breakdown in the insulation of this middle phase and cause these signs of uh, arcing. And uh, accordingly, uh, the repair was uh, done. I hope this will answer uh, your question. Uh, new transformer filled with new oil have high BD. Why it is so? Uh, we need to look at the uh, at the all the DGA uh, results and the oil quality results to uh, decide why is that. If you can send it to us, and we will get back to you. Uh, a good question, what is the recommended calibration intervals for the gas on uh, online monitoring system? Um, so uh, it depends. Um, for Morgan Schaefer, for the Calestos, um, uh, we, uh, when, when it comes to the multi-gas, for example, we are doing the calibration every 24 hours um, for C5 and uh, C9, for the multi-gas. For the Calisto R9, the latest uh, one, uh, we are doing the calibration every one hour after each measurement. Uh, the reason why we are doing a very short interval for the calibration, again, to make sure that what you are seeing, what you are having in uh, your DGA monitor uh, is uh, very accurate compared to what is happening uh, in reality and also compared to the lab measurements. And that is the most important uh, to have a DGA monitor where the results can be compared to the lab uh, monitor, to the lab results, sorry. If the transformer was uh, already uh, ordered and in manufacturing stage, can you intervene and install put sensors immediately uh, after ordering? Uh, yes, it's possible. Uh, uh, if you are, if you mean the uh, hatch sensors, uh, it depends on the stage of manufacturing in the factory, and everything can be discussed, uh, of course. Um, so, yeah, if, this, if there is an interest, yes, we can uh, we can get back to you on that. If you can let us know at what at which stage uh, is the manufacturing of this transformer, and we are working, by the way, very closely with the uh, OEMs uh, of the transformers. So, uh, hopefully, we can help. Uh, we conduct DGA uh, 
its results are very high. After four circulation of the oil filtration, it's reduced to 50%. Uh, the circulation of the oil doesn't help in uh, uh, or doesn't uh, give a solution to the high DGA. Yes, it's, it's going to uh, reduce the values, but again, you will not understand the root cause of uh, the increase of the DGA. It will just, uh, the, the oil circulation will cover or hide uh, the main problem itself. So first we need to identify what is the problem, what is happening inside, and uh, then we can consider the oil circulation, for example. But again, we need first to identify the reason behind the uh, elevation and the results of the DGA. Uh, if you can send to the results to us, we can have a look on it. Uh, for transformer, which of the three monitoring systems are preferable, partial discharge, 10 delta, or is this offline only and SF or SFRA? SFRA or Swift Frequency Response Analysis is an offline diagnostic tool. You are doing it in order to detect any mechanical changes inside the transformer, and you have to take the transformer out from service. 10 delta for the pushing uh, is a very useful one. You can do it uh, offline, but you need to take the transformer out of service, or you can monitor it online. And in this case, you need a monitoring device to uh, monitor the condition of the uh, pushing. Partial discharge, very useful uh, if you consider uh, the right sensors for that. Um, and we can help in, uh, in these points. Yes, the recording will be shared. Are BD sensors and transformers only installed when the BD sensors, uh, or when the BD is detected from the uh, DGA? Uh, so uh, the, uh, the idea from the BD uh, uh, sensors is to give you another uh, opportunity or another way to, diag to diagnose or to confirm the presence of the BT with respect to the DGA. Both of them, they help you to identify the presence of BT, BT sensors and DGA. Is there a correlation between parameters? For example, oil measurements, PG measurements have correlation based on the experience. Uh, so uh, when it comes to the uh, BD uh, measurements, if you have a BD sensors, uh, you, uh, uh, the BD sensors usually they uh, interact very quickly uh, to the presence of PD compared to the DGA. Uh, both of them, they are very uh, helpful. Uh, DGA, uh, especially for the hydrogen, give you an indication in the presence of uh, BD pattern. And the, uh, uh, the BD sensor itself can help you as well to confirm or validate the presence of the uh, BD inside the uh, transformer. And usually when you take a decision uh, for uh, that this transformer should go out from the service, uh, as a user, you always like to see uh, different diagnostic tools in order to confirm or justify your decision. So if you have a BD sensors installed, if you have a DGA monitor system, this can make or give you a confidence that there is something or an issue happening inside the transformer. There are a number of uh, questions in French. I'm sorry, I don't know French. so. I will get back to you with answers. This one. Which method, which method is more accurate and preferable in the BD? Online monitoring? Uh, or offline. Online monitoring is always useful to 
to give you an indication, just an indication, uh, if there is an issue or concern in the health of your asset or not. And based on that, you can decide to um, reschedule the maintenance of your asset. If the severity of the BD is quite high from the online monitoring, you can have uh, um, an urgent uh, outage. And from the offline uh, measurements uh, from your uh, transformer, uh, or using the offline techniques and measuring the BD for the transformer, you can validate, or you can even localize the presence of the BD uh, inside your uh, transformer. If the transformer is long time offline, six months or above, what tests are required before uh, energizing? Uh, so uh, uh, it depends on the, uh, again, history of this transformer. It was there a reason to keep this transformer out of service or no? Um, and before returning this transformer back to service, uh, in general, I would do uh, all the offline tests that are available and also I will take an oil sample uh, to do a DGA and uh, uh, oil quality uh, to make sure everything is fine. And also these results can be used as a reference for you when the transformer is back in uh, service. Are accurate uh, partial discharges measured in the pushing uh, to diagnose a problem inside the tank or BD in the pushings are only valid for the diagnosis of uh, the pushing uh, problem? Uh, I would say both of them. When you are measuring the partial discharge through the pushing, you are measuring um, this, the reason or the cause of this uh, partial discharge or the localized breakdown in your insulation, it can be in the pushing itself or it can be inside the uh, tank. Uh, so uh, uh, the more points you are having to measure the partial discharge on the transformer, uh, the more visibility you are having when it comes to the uh, uh, presence of the PET itself. So you can uh, consider measuring the partial discharge through the pushings. You can have the UHF drain valve probe uh, hatch sensor, if it's a new transformer, and you have the possibility to consider that in the factory. Um, so there are there are several sensors, and if you increase the number of these sensors, you have a more visibility. There are a lot of questions. Uh, I, I I try to answer all of them. There are I might uh, miss some of uh, these questions, but uh, I will. Uh, I will get back to you on the questions that I haven't uh, answered, and I will send uh, I will send the answer privately. So this is uh, I think the time uh, came for uh, the end of this webinar. Thank you so much again for uh, being with us today. Um, uh, we are all we are having a series of webinars. This is not the end. Uh, please follow us on the. Uh, our website for the next webinars and one of my colleagues will uh, consider other topics that might be of your interest. Uh, thank you very much.